Well, hello everyone and welcome to the final session of Nest Fest 2020. Thank you so much for joining us all. It's been a lovely day and now finally we have got a really great discussion for you guys where you can ask them some questions to our lovely panel of artists here. Anything you want to know, just put a comment in on our YouTube channel or put a comment on our Facebook page and we will ask them for you. Joining us, we've got the lovely um, Helen Hayes, who is a musician, local musician to Lowestoft. We've also got the lovely Adam Barnes, who is a local photographer in Lowestoft. And we've got Ben Osborne as well, who is a DJ. And hopefully you've seen all of their work in Nesfest so far. So um, guys, would you like to go uh, and introduce yourself? Should we start with Ben? Would you like to introduce yourself first? Sure, yeah, uh, I'm a DJ, um, as Meg just said. Um, and, but I also do various other things. Um, I run a thing called Noise of Art, um, which works with mostly electronic music, but all forms of music and any other artistic discipline at all, whether that's contemporary dance or fine art or whatever. And I also work with um, festivals across the UK and Europe. So locally in Suffolk, that includes Latitude Festival, First Light Festival, of course, in Lowestoft, um, and a thing I started in Woodbridge called Woodbridge Festival. Um, and my role within that is basically bringing music um, and other artistic content into the festivals. Changes with different festivals, but with it, within um, First Light, I'm kind of responsible for the DJ programme and some aspects of the more kind of clubby end of, of the music offering. Cool. Um, so Ben, would you like to go next? Hi there, yeah. I'm Adam Barnes. I'm a photographer. Um, but I'm also a designer. Design, um, I do branding and websites and so on and so forth. But um, I did lots of the photography for the First Light Festival, which um, were on the um, billboards at the top end of Lowestoft um, recently. Um, it's a quite interesting experience recently. I had to photograph my own photographs, um, which was good fun. And um, uh, yeah, uh, video, photography, design, the lot. <laughs> Fabulous, and Helen. Um, yeah, so I'm a musician. Um, I class I classically trained actually. I studied music at the Birmingham Conservatoire, but my interest has been for many years as a community musician, and I have worked on all sorts of projects in different settings, from prisons through to schools, um, care homes. And over the years, I've, I've developed a real interest in music for well-being. So I work um, locally with people living with dementia and Parkinson's disease. I'm a trained singing for lung health practitioner um, and I sing and play violin in a swing band. So we do lots of gigs around, um, but I just enjoy creative music making and working with people to sort of explore different different sides of music to maybe that they haven't experienced before um, and I work with Ben at the First Light Festival I coordinate the music for the event um, so we kind of program some of the stages together and um, I'm also involved in organising some of the community workshops there as well. Fabulous. Um, so I got a general question, anybody can answer it, um, which is basically, when did you know you wanted to be an artist? Was there a specific moment in your life when you thought, you know what, this is what I want to do, I can't not do it? Goodness. Well, for me, very early. Draw drawing and painting, I was uh, well into it. It's probably six-ish, <laughs> remembering um, back, that's all I would do all the time all the time. Mm -hmm. Go on, after you. Uh, well, um, when I was a very small child, my mum and dad used to take me to see Father Christmas and every single year I asked him for a violin. And my parents thought I was going through a phase, um, age two, age three, age four. When I was finally eight, Father Christmas <laughs> brought me a violin and that was that. I knew absolutely that that's what I wanted to do. So again, like Adam, from a very young age, I was keen on music. It was, it, And then, of course, as soon as I learned to play, found out I was good at it and enjoyed it. And it's just always been my first passion in life. So I've never considered doing anything else, really. And I, I feel very privileged that I have spent my whole working life making making my living as a musician and working in the music world. 
Cool. I didn't, I didn't uh, start playing that young. I did start on the guitar quite young, but, um, but I think at eight, I was probably playing on the tennis racket and the hairbrush. Um, <laughs> I remember uh, uh, doing a performance with some of my school friends with us miming along to um, various acts around at the time um, and making our parents sit and watch while we strummed the, uh, <laughs> the tennis <laughs> racket. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I started playing guitar, but I, um, uh, I, kind, of, I kind of got, drawn quite heavily into it I suppose like from 10 onwards um, and certainly by the time I was like 12 I was trying to put together hopeless school bands um, and then some of it worked so by the time I was 16 I was playing in the um, kind of the pub circuit around London and I had a residency at Dublin Castle uh, and I wasn't supposed to even be in the pub because I was too young to, to be there um, but uh, I looked older than I, than I was um, and uh, so that kind of started started me off um, and then I tried to do various other things at various stages and I always kind of get pulled back into music so eventually I sort of gave up and went okay obviously this is where I'm supposed to be um, and then within music I've done lots of different things um, as, as stuff has presented itself um, so for me I mean I imagine it's probably true for, for everybody involved in this the conversation and the arts in general um, the great thing about creative endeavors is they open up lots of opportunities that you don't think you're going to encounter when you start a project but you know by the time you um, you get to the end of it you find you develop new avenues and uh, and generally that's kind of what happens the whole time is that you you end up in places you didn't imagine you were going to be Fabulous. So this leads really nicely onto my next question. Um, a lot of our questions are quite specific to um, individual people, but this is a general question for everyone, um, which is, what is the best thing about being an artist? Mm. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> doing your own thing, I think, as well. You know, that's, that's one of the, 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 the best things. You can make the choices on, on what you want to do and when you want to do them and how you want to do them. Um, um, which has always been, I, I worked in um, London for 18 years at a design agency um, in central London near St Paul's Cathedral. Um, but even there, although we had very large clients, worked for central government and um, all sorts of people, um, you know, we were um, sort of working to our own pace, as it were. Some of those paces uh, quite strict with deadlines but we they were ours <laughs> anyway that's me um do, do you want me to go next um the, the thing i like about being a musician is um that you are doing the thing that you love and um and so it's a joy it doesn't feel like work um, but also it connects you with like-minded people and you tend to do this kind of job because you are passionate about it. So it's very exciting when you get to work with other people who share the same passions as you. And um, it brings joy to people. You know, it's a great feeling when you're performing or when you facilitate. A, 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 you know, I organise a lot of events as well. And it's just a really good feeling to, to make good things happen for other people. Um, so yeah, that's that's it for me, really. <laughs> I don't know what Ben thinks. Yeah, I'd, I'd echo that completely. I mean, I was, I was going to say collaborating with people is is, is uh, I mean, not every artistic discipline has this, but most creative disciplines require you to to um, to collaborate, and every single one of them requires you to create something new. Um, so it's a constant education and often it's an education through the people you're working with um, because you get to meet some, some basically really interesting people um, who are also trying to think up new things the whole time. So um, so it is a kind of constant education and uh, yeah, I'm working with people um, to create nice things. Cool. Okay, great. Um, so I've got another question for Ben, which is, um, can you get any G DJing experience while you're still at school? And if so, where can you go and find it? Or where can I, where can this person go and find it? Well, I mean, there, there are, there are DJ schools, of course, um, and DJ courses. Uh, we are also at first, like, we're, we're going to do an online um, kind of introduction to, to DJing in, um, Helen probably know better the dates for this, but, um, but uh, I think cer certainly before the end of the year, probably late November, I think. Um, uh, and that's I'm going to do a little introduction to different styles styles of DJing. Um, it's obviously with all these things, it tends to be a bit easier if you're somewhere like London, where there are or where there were 
quite a few DJ schools. But of course, what's happened over the last six months is that everything's gone online. So actually, you don't have to be geographically near a DJ school in order to do a course. And there's lots of different levels of courses and there's lots of different types of DJ. Um, so, so one of the first things people need to do is kind of look into the options of, of what they, what kind of kit they can use, what style of DJing they're interested in. Um, and then the chances are that there's probably something online available to help you. But anyway, if you want to tune in to the, to the introduction that we're going to do and we'll go through sort of some of the history of it, some of um, the different options there are of what the different bits of kit to use and different styles. Um, and, uh, and then hopefully be able to follow that up with some more in-depth stuff, um, depending what we're allowed to do in the future. Fabulous. And I'm assuming that the information for that kind of thing will be on the first like festival website and Facebook page and social media, that kind exactly. of thing. Exactly, yeah. Brilliant. So check back there if you want to get more involved in DJing. Um, so this is a question for Adam, please. Um, they said, I'm interested in ph photographing wildlife. Do you have any recommendations for the first kit that you would buy if you wanted to try photogra photographing wildlife? Well, that that's, um, that's yeah, you want to get a reasonable lens for wildlife. I'm not a wildlife photographer, but what you would want to do is probably look for a what they call a bridge camera which is, they usually come with a pretty big zoom range on them. Um, they, you can get them without spending an awful lot of money, um, about, you know, um, um, certainly on somewhere like Amazon and even secondhand on eBay, although be a bit careful, but yes, a bridge camera from someone like um, Canon or Nikon, I don't know the exact prices or model numbers, but that's what you want to look for. Um, and they do, um, they do have a, really big zoom lens usually 30 times something along those lines 24 times zoom which if you want to photograph wildlife that's the thing to do you can really zoom in on something have to have a steady hand always good to have a, a tripod as well um you don't need to spend an awful lot on a tripod but um to start with but get a get a tripod and a bridge camera and then you're away Great, fabulous. Um, this is a question for Helen. Um, so I am interested in finding out more about music and getting involved in music, but I don't know where to start in terms of trialing instruments. Is there anywhere I can go or anybody I can ask to borrow instruments from before I commit to buying one? Oh, that's a really good question. Well, um, in Lower Stoft, we're very fortunate that we have a fantastic um, music hub, which is part of the county music service. And they provide um, instrumental teaching sessions to most of the schools in Lower Stoft, actually. Um, but you might not always be aware because it's not necessarily class teaching that they're doing. They might be teaching individual people instruments. So my advice would be to speak to your music teacher at school and ask if you've got any visiting peripatetic teachers coming in, um, because I'm sure that um, if they can, they will give you the chance to try out an instrument. There's also a group that meets every Friday at the East Point Academy, which is run by the North Suffolk Music Hub. And there are lots of different activities going on there every week for every, everyone in the local area of school age can go along to that. So um, you, again, you can ask your music teacher at school about that or just have a look online. Um, and so, yeah, I'd say ask your music teacher and tap into the county music service um, that we have so much opportunity from. Cool, brilliant. Check out the uh, county music service, fabulous. Um, I've got another question for Adam, which is, um, I've taken a really fuzzy photograph. Is it salvageable or well, I just have to start again. Ooh, that's, that's, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Um, it depends how fuzzy. Um, I mean, I'm lucky enough to be able to use things like Photoshop, which does have an anti-blur um, filter, which sort of can work, sort of. There may be some um, other software, but again, I use Photoshop and and it can get you out of a scrape. I've used it probably about 
twice in in my life um and i would say once it's worked very very well um but it, if it's very fuzzy they, if, unlike the um uh, the films where they say can you enhance that and they press a button and suddenly it's enhanced that, that doesn't really exist unfortunately um james bond doesn't do photography like um <laughs> so you got but if you can get hold of Photoshop, uh, again, there might be something else, um, but Photoshop seems to be the best one. There is a sort of a way of doing it, to a point. Cool. <laughs> okay, great. Um, this is now a question for Ben. Um, so this person has written, and I always associate, or I always think of DJing as being a solo activity that you do by yourself, and then lots of people either listen or dance to it. But can you do DJing in groups with other DJs? Yes, certainly you can. I mean, there's there's a whole kind of tradition in back to back DJing, um, uh, which is normally two people, um, <coughs> one on each deck if you're playing on vinyl or CDJ if you're playing CDs or your laptop if you're playing on your laptop. Um, and uh, and the idea is to there's a sort of slight bit bit of not so much testing each other, but kind of leading each other into responding to what the previous tra track was. So kind of building off each other's um, uh, music. Um, and that can, it can be enormous fun. And and because it is a bit more challenging because you don't know what's going to be pulled out next. And so what you're going to be able to have to respond to yourself. Um, but the, the, within DJing, there's a whole tradition of like sort of tag teams and sound crews um, and some of the earliest forms of, of DJing um, around sound systems uh, would have a, a whole series of people, um, some of whom weren't necessarily the DJ. There's a whole tradition in Box Boys, and the Box Boys tradition was um, the people who selected the next track for the DJ to put on. Um, so their specialism would be knowing what would be the right tune for the DJ and the crowd. Um, so there, there's a whole kind of team approach, and and if you look at lots of lots of the clubs, um, and are in fact you know they're a collaboration of DJs putting on a night together, um, and uh, so they're kind of both acting as the promoter and as the, as the DJ team, um, and you know so they're obviously they're not only working together behind the decks, they're working together on trying to get the flavour of the night, making sure that uh, that people know about it, but also thinking who you know who are the right guests to bring in. Um, and so on. So that's a whole kind of collaborative community that goes on um, away from the actual event itself. Uh, but the other thing about DJing is it's incredibly sociable. So, so it's kind of one of the things I really like about it is um, that, that the best form of DJing isn't when you're kind of like stuck on a stage miles away from the audience, but actually right there amongst people and communicating with people. Um, and, uh, and if you're doing that with a team of DJs who are also communicating with people, then the whole thing blurs into one. Um, and, uh, and that's probably, you know, the, the most enjoyable way to DJ. Wow, fabulous. It's like a whole world I didn't know about. <laughs> um, so this is a question for Helen. Um, and this young person basically said this, I'm paraphrasing slightly, but um, they're saying that there's a lot of pressure on them to do really well in other subjects other than art and music. But they really love art and music and they and they want to do that. Uh, do you have any advice for them for how to balance their non-artistic academic subjects with their artistic academic uh, subjects? That's a really interesting question, actually, um, because I think this is a dilemma that many young people are faced with. And it's particularly difficult when you get to the time that you're taking your GCSE options. Um, and I think actually more than the young people, it's kind of the parents um, that, that, that kind of need to understand that these arts subjects are really valuable um, because whatever happens with GCSEs, you have to do your core subjects like English and maths, et cetera. Um, but when you come to apply for college courses or you come to apply for jobs, subjects like music are really highly regarded because you are using a lot of skills when you're when you're um, when you're learning to play an instrument or, or learning to make music that are very transferable into life. So you're learning how to make decisions. You're learning how to work with other people. You're learning how to express yourself. And I think that actually, if you have a balance um, of your core academic subjects and then subjects that, that you are interested in 
um, then then that that's that's a good idea. Um, and it might be just worth um, asking your your teacher to speak to your parents if it's a problem that your parents are not supporting you in doing your arts. Um, but you know, rest assured, these subjects are, are very highly valued further on in life. And um, I can't I can't say too much, but I'm always saying to people, you know, we're all individuals, and as we come out the other side of our education, we all have skills that, and things that we're good at. We're all different. So go with your heart and get a bit of balance is, is my advice. Cool. I like it. Lovely. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so this is a question Well, for anybody, whoever would like to answer it, which is um, I'm thinking about being an artist. Um, I think they, they want to be a musician, but um, they want to know, is it essential to go to do any kind of further education? Do you have to go to university? Do you have to go to a music college or can you just become an artist once you leave school? Does anyone have any advice? <laughs> Well, uh, I guess as as the musician, I can I can perhaps give give some advice on that. Um, I think it's if you have the opportunity to undertake education to to the highest level that you can, then I would always encourage you to do that if it's the right thing for you. Now, um, you know, I studied a classical music degree and I did A level music before that. Um, but I've always had other interests. I've always played in bands. I've always sort of been writing songs and performing alongside that. Now, these days, you know, you can do a degree course in popular music. Um, there, we've got um, performing arts and music at Lowestoft College. So um, as, as a sixth form option, you can go and do courses there. And, um, you know, I think as well as having the creative ideas, it's really good to have the kind of understanding of the theory and the history and all these kind of things. And I think Ben will probably agree with me that um, it's really helpful not just to learn, but to connect with other people and get excited about ideas and start working with others. And so if you have the opportunity, then there are so many different courses out there with, with music and, and, um, and, and other art subjects that if you get the opportunity, I'd say go for it. But then other people have come through this route by just just doing their own thing. So I guess there's no rule in place. Um, that's my answer. I don't know if you want to add on to that, Ben. <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, I agree. There, there is no no rule. I mean, you only have to look at sort of uh, John Lennon's spelling to realise that you don't have to have gone through an academic. I mean, the Beatles would actually go to art school, but um, but uh, you don't have to go through an academic route to get to to be one of the most successful musicians of all time. Um, but uh, but certainly the kind of community thing is really helpful um and funny enough, you know, I've, I've been to, to three universities and haven't studied music at any of them but have, have met tons of people who are involved in music who i still work with in music through through those experiences um so actually that kind of that kind of collective um space does tend to even if you're, you're there for a completely different reason does tend to mean that you get to find the people who are interested in the things that you're interested in um, and and that in itself can uh, can contribute to uh, to what could become a music career, even if you're not studying music. So so there's lots of, there's lots of basically there's lots of different routes. You don't have to take an academic route. That, you know there's 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 tons of examples of, of really successful artists who have gone no, this is what I want to do. Um, I do remember really early on in life a really good friend of mine who ended up being being a singer saying the thing that you've got to understand about music if you want it is you've got to really want to pursue it because it's much easier to be a bank manager. <laughs> so, uh, but it, you know, that's, that's the, the thing is, it, the, the, the pressure actually is on people often to, to take a safer route um, and to, 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 to see kind of creative routes as being a bit of a risk. Um, actually, the creative economy is really, really strong, um, but you do have to work at it in order, in order to, um, to achieve in it. Yeah, and, and I would say from certainly from my point of view, being around like minded people for a few years and being um, critiqued from tutors um, and being introduced to uh, great. Um, I went to this design school, um, the degree in design, in being introduced to some great designers, which, you know, you wouldn't necessarily be able to do on your own um, was of great benefit. Um, having said that, I've also met some um, great designers and photographers who didn't go to college at all. They are self-taught and they are fantastic. So it's really up to the individual. 
It might be worth mentioning as well, Meg, that um, alongside the DJ um, video workshops that Ben's going to be offering through First Light Festival, this is part of a project called Spin Back. Um, we are offering the chance for young people in Lowestoft to take part in some workshops led by professional musicians. And I'll send you the details about those so you can publicise those. But if there are any young musicians in Lowestoft that would like to get to work with some professional voice coaches, songwriters and producers, that's an opportunity that's going to be coming up very soon. And it just gives you a taste of what it's like being a musician in the professional world and hopefully will help people to develop skills and and ask questions and connect with other like-minded young people so you know there are opportunities here um, and there are people like us that are trying to um, give young people the chance to to learn and, and, and come together so um, yeah hopefully that will um, appeal to some of, of the people that have seen what we've been doing today fabulous thank you so much that's lovely a really good information to know um, so this sort of leads on to the next question, um, which is a bit ironic given that we're running a virtual festival. Um, but, but the question is, so um, I'm a young person in Lowestoft and I would probably be classed as being in digital poverty. I don't have great access to the internet and we only have one laptop for my whole family, which is often used by my parents as well. Do you have any advice as to where I can get involved with creative activities that are not virtual at the moment? during the COVID-19 crisis? It's like the million dollar question. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's very, yeah, well, again, I, I'm sort of talking a lot here, but um, that's very interesting. Um, and as you know, Meg, back in the lockdown, the Norfolk and Norwich Festival Bridge produced um, a, a written um, um, set of arts activities called the Let's Create. Um, and I submitted one of those. I created like a worksheet for a musical activity that people can do at home. And I think that's still available. So if if you have that person's contact details, we could get we could probably get a posted out version to them. But there are some fantastic community projects in Lowestoft and the Seagull Theatre comes to my mind as running some face-to-face -face sessions and, and lots of opportunities there. So I'd check out the Seagull Theatre, you've got the County Music Service um, and of course um, you know you've got the Marina Theatre as well. So and of course first like you know there are some some things that are being offered at the moment um, and again it's just I'd start maybe with somewhere like the Seagull because I think they are doing some face-to-face -face things at the moment. Um, and if you can get hold of the Let's Create activities, which were produced by Norfolk and Norwich Festival Bridge, there's lots of things to do there that you can do at home if you haven't got access to the internet. I don't know if either of you people have got any ideas on that. <laughs> <laughs> Very tricky one, certainly from a photography point of view. Um, I mean, I don't know about um, anything that's available in Lowestoft for that at the moment. Um, I'm not sure, I'm afraid. Yeah, I'm a, I don't know, sorry, I don't, I don't know particularly about Lowestoft. I mean, one of the things we are looking to do is see whether we can do stuff with the seagull in the future, and um, and uh, and we were looking at ways that we could um, facilitate DJing and things. But but the, the difficulty is with all of that, obviously, is is the kind of restrictions on um, social distancing. Um, but if you're interested in DJing, of course, you, the a lot of DJing isn't digital. I mean, there is digital DJing, but um, but uh, obviously vinyl um, is the original form of, of DJ format. Um, and, uh, and so if that's something that interests you um, and there's, you know, sources of vinyl um, in, uh, in, in secondhand shops and so on that, that don't have to be ruinously expensive. Um, but you do, you know, you do need to have somewhere where you can access the equipment. Um, but one of, you know, one of the skills we're gonna be looking at in the DJ workshops is, is putting together um, playlists and sounds that work together and so on um, and for that you don't actually have to have access to to a computer to be able to compile things that you think are going to work together um, but yes yeah, so I, I don't really know of anything locally and, and one thing I would say about photography um, um, the, 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 uh, an old saying is always the best one is the, the the best camera is the one you have on you so even if it's a mobile phone from 10 years ago or whatever uh, uh, the worst camera on it you could imagine that's the best one you could use if if, if you've got it on you um it's not about um 
the equipment at all. It really isn't. It's about the eye and capturing that moment and 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 how you do that. Um, so, you know, um, maybe people have got an old mobile phone, even if it didn't have a SIM card in it. It's got a it's got a camera, and it might be able to might be able to be used. Mm -hmm. Fabulous, brilliant, well, lovely advice for everyone. Um, I'm sure they'll definitely take that up, um, and we can certainly send round and publicise all the things that you just said. So we will do that. Um, this one is is a, another more general question. Um, so whoever would like to can answer it. Um, obviously, you guys are very established artists, and you've worked very hard at your professions, and you you know you're really well tuned as an artist. But there was possibly a time when you weren't so established, maybe when you were younger. Um, if you could go back and tell your younger self one piece of advice that you know now that you wish you'd known then, what would it be? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> um, mm. you don't go out as much. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a big one for me. <laughs> you got one, Ben. Oh well, okay. I, I directly counter that actually. <laughs> with, the, with the last six months, my advice to an earlier self would be go out more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess does it? Do you have anything? Any specific kind of hurdles or challenges that you face as a as an artist? And um, you know, obviously, you know, lots of people will face them being artists. Mm -hmm. And is there any advice that you can give well, the younger people who might be facing them? Yeah, probably one of the things for me, um, and I think Helen, um, um, with her daughter, can relate to this. Is is um, one of the things college did for me was uh, gave me the ability to. Um, I was um, quite shy to say the very least, but going to college certainly um, brought that out. So I would say, if you if 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 you are shy or anxious or anything like that, um, getting out. Of, if I was to go back and say one thing is to get out of your comfort zone um, and, and push yourself. Um, difficult though it is. That's me. Um, yeah, and I think the advice that I would give anybody, because as well as being a, a practicing a musician, I've worked in the sort of, you know, the management side of things as well. And I think, and hopefully I've followed this advice. It's kind of not like advice. I'm saying you should have done it this way. I think there are, if you turn up on time and you're polite and you are pleasant and you are professional, you will always be booked over the person who turns up and is difficult, basically. <laughs> so I've always sort of taken a pride in not just turning up and, and, and performing, but actually being uh, efficient and nice to deal with. I think if you're pleasant and, and so on, then that always makes a big difference. And also I've gone through my life a lot of the time having what I call imposter syndrome, where I always think I'm not good enough. And actually, if you can kind of just believe in yourself and follow your own heart and know that you are good enough and, and sort of have that conviction in yourself, it's a confidence thing. And it's very hard when you're young and a lot of confidence comes through experience. And I feel much more confident now than I did when I was sort of in my 20s. But the other thing I did in my 20s, which I think really paid off, was I volunteered because I knew that I wanted to, to get better known. And sometimes if you do things for free or if you turn up and, and volunteer for community projects then and you show willing, then the next time you get booked, you get paid, you know, and it's kind of being willing to sort of get out there and do things. And, and like Adam says a little bit, go out of your comfort zone um, and it's hard work. If you get a knock back, you just have to keep going, but just believe in yourself and, and just always do your best. Does that sound really boring, Ben? <laughs> no, I, don't know, I, 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 I completely relate to all of that, and I think the important thing is that um, is what you say about about uh, treating people well, because although it's about creativity, it's also about people. I mean, people are central to to everything. Um, so, and um, and without the engagement of other people, none of the stuff that you do is ever going to make sense um, or get anywhere. Um, and, and you also find in life, you end up working with the same people 
time and again who pop up you know you might think you've seen somebody for the last time in your life but then suddenly you're somewhere completely strange in a different part of the world and there they are um so there is a funny thing about um, i mean certainly this is true of music um that actually the, there's quite a small community um and you do keep on bumping each into each other again which is great because it's a bit like being sort of like it's a bit like never leaving school you know <laughs> at some point somebody's going to pop up again at some some different area um so yeah i think i you both made excellent points yeah fabulous i mean it's like good good advice for life in general isn't it to kind of you know turn up show willing be polite look after everyone i love it <laughs> um so this again is a kind of another quite specific general question um do you as artists do you prefer working in groups with other artists or do you prefer working by yourself Um, well, as a musician, it always has to be working in, in groups with other people. And I've been very fortunate through my life. When I was a teenager, I grew up in Leicestershire uh, in a very sort of working class industrial part of the of the county. And there weren't really that many other people that were interested in music. But when I joined the county youth orchestra, I suddenly met other young people that had the same interests as me, got opportunities. And I've still got friends from those days playing in bands. And one thing is that since the beginning of the lockdown, I haven't actually played a gig with my 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 swing trio um, out of nowhere. And there are three of us in the band and I really, really miss um, playing with the others. So, yeah, definitely um, working with other people. But at the moment, we're all having to just do our best and be resourceful. So I'm trying my best, but I do miss working with other people. You're probably different as a photographer. <laughs> no, as a photographer, obviously there's times when you're out on your own. Um, and sometimes that's lovely. That's great. You know, capturing, um, you know, scenery and so on and so forth. But there's other times as a photographer, I'm doing portraiture. I'm doing, um, uh, I've, I've done some work for a, a manufacturing companies and photographing products and so on and so forth. And you're meeting lots and lots of different people also creative meetings with um, art directors and so on and so forth. Um, so I, I kind of get a bit bit of it all really. Um, less so obviously now, lots of Zoom um, and so on, but that's still great, you know, still get to bounce ideas off of people. Um, so, and I've worked in studios uh, in, again, in London, sort of 30 of us in a, in a studio and that's, you know, can be a great laugh. <laughs> If the, the, if the question is which do I prefer, yeah, working with people definitely, but but it's actually great to also be part of a, of a process where you can do it by yourself or you can do it with other people and having that because sometimes that the choice is, would be better if you did do it by yourself in order to, to, to get something done in the way it needs to be done. Um, but it's obviously much better fun working with people and everything you're doing, going back to the point, everything you're doing is being done to share with other people. Um, so if you don't have, if you don't have anybody else out there, there's no point in doing it, you know, so it's kind of, it's, it's validation is, is by sharing it. Um, but, uh, but it is nice being in a, being in a situation where, especially now, if you need to get on with doing stuff, you can actually do it by yourself. Mm. Brilliant. Thank you so much for that. We've probably got time for one more question, which is, um, do, do or does, does anyone have a particular favourite artist that they like and look up to? And if so, why? Go on. Well, for me, that's easy. All, all the young people in Lowestoft probably know this already because I'm always talking about it. I've, I'm a big fan of Queen. <laughs> And from being a teenager, <laughs> I've just always felt really inspired by Queen, Freddie, all of them actually, but particularly Freddie. I think Freddie was such um, a characterful artist. And I do listen to all sorts of music. I, I love um, listening to, I mean, I used to go and see Simon Rattle conducting the City of Birmingham Symphony Orchestra when I was a student there and absolutely idolised him as well. He's a wonderful artist, but 
and I listened to some young, you know, some like modern day ones. But the thing with Freddie was he actually sang and he actually had character and he was really individual. And I think sometimes today there's there's not so much distinction between the different people. You know, there's kind of a few people that are quite maybe I'm getting old, but yeah, definitely Freddie. Freddie forever. He's just like a real one off. So there you go. <laughs> I love it. I have to say I agree. <laughs> <He's Aww>. awesome. <laughs> I was at his last ever gig. I was there. So um, as wow. a teenager, that was That's one of the amazing. first big gigs I went to. So you can't ever top that. I still got the T-shirt from the gig as well. So there you go. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Anyone else? So oh, ben, you can go next. Adam's mind's gone blank. <laughs> <laughs> well, but yeah, I'm 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 gonna completely flunk this one. But um, I mean, just because it's actually it's a huge question. Um, I, I grew up idolizing so many people um, and, and in different aspects of, of music, um, but also in different aspects of, of art, you know, and it's kind of, and it's, it's impossible to begin listing all of those people. I'll kick myself for not doing it later, but then, you know, if I did start, I'd miss out on the most obvious person. Um, but yeah, there were, I mean, the t tons of really, you know, imp artists of, of, who came came before um, people who as a child I idol, idolized. Then amongst my my peer group, people who I, you know, got to know who were absolutely amazing. And then uh, what happens is you get older, is you start meeting people younger than you who, who <laughs> come up who are brilliant, you know. So so. Um, uh, but I also, I mean, I think again, it's it's really nice to be in that position where where um, you you can sort of see and appreciate other people's talent the whole time. Um, and it's part of that education process as well. You know, sort of people come along and bring something new. Whether that's in music or any other form of art, um, and uh, and sort of so, but you can have that thing that where you where you, somebody can totally change your opinion around something the way you think something ought to be done, and suddenly it's being done differently, and it works really well, and so on. So, um, but yes, I say, I'm I'm going to drop out of actually trying to give you a, a bunch of names. <laughs> uh, I've gone completely blank, but but I would um, get just pop off from my point of view, hop onto Google and look for some famous street photography and start to uh, street photographers and start to look for some of those because they're, they're, they're more about what you would never expect to capture that are the most um, stunning. Um, just a, a moment, a face. Um, uh, and obviously there's lots and lots of them. Um, very famous images, which is uh, at the moment is completely past me. Um, but just have a bit of a look. Um, there's some great ones. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Well, thank you guys so much. That is um, that's probably all we have time for tonight. But it was lovely speaking to you and hearing your fabulous answers. And um, I also want to say thank you to all the young people that submitted all those brilliant questions. And um, I certainly couldn't offer all of those up. So thank you so much uh, for, to you guys as well for being involved. Um, this is our last Nest Fest uh, 2020 session. Um, but so thank you to everybody that's still watching us and still with us until eight o'clock at night. It's lovely to have you. Uh, but now we say good night and thank you so much for joining. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> and I really hope that's not.